This is a quick analysis of Eden Rock by Charles Causley. In this video you will see some of the techniques used and you will see how you might write about them using quotes and technical terminology. We're going to start with allusion or things which are alluded to. No context is given in the first line. Who are they? Where or what is Eden Rock? It drops the reader in media res, which means in the middle of the action. The poem begins in media res, with no context given in the first line. The reader does not know who they are, or what Eden Rock is. The effect is disarming and mysterious. It creates intimacy, as this is the poet's memory, and for him it requires no explanation. However, the poet then goes on to illustrate the scene in minute detail. Looking at Lexis, the words chosen are simple, and this reflects the idyllic scene. The poet's language is touchingly simple with plain adjectives such as sprigged, straw and white. Even the simile, the colour of wheat, lacks technical finesse. The simplicity reflects an idyllic scene and subtly reminds the reader that the events are seen through the eyes of a child. Let's look at the tone. Intimacy is created through the detail. It's almost written in prose rather than verse as we would expect in a poem, and this suggests routine. Intimacy is created in the poem through such details as milk straight from an old HP sauce bottle and tin cups painted blue. Sections of the poem are written in prose rather than verse stripping away pretensions and allowing the reader into the family. We are almost expected to know which are the same three plates, as if we are part of an established routine. You can see the forward slash in the quote, which shows I am quoting from more than one line. The next technique is imagery. The poem takes on an otherworldly feeling with the images created, which are suggestive of heaven. When the sky whitens as if lit by three suns, something otherworldly enters the poem. The bright white light is suggestive of heaven, and as the mother shades her eyes, she looks towards the speaker, as if some distance has occurred between them. The once clear scene becomes a memory that is fading into angelic whiteness. Finally, we're going to look at structure. The final quatrain, which is the four-line stanza, is split into a tercet, which is a three-line stanza, and a monostich, which is a one-line stanza. That gap is suggestive of distance. The final quatrain of the poem differs from the others structurally because it is split into a tercet and a monostich, which is a visual representation of the distance between the speaker and his parents. Connecting the lines would not be as hard as you might think. It would require the speaker's death which is one of the most natural things in the world. If you are interested in personalised tuition for AQA English Language or Literature, please visit the website shown on screen. And thank you for watching.